We in the financial inclusion world have spent most of the past decade trying to get people to use formal rather than informal services. So when we started to work with customers in the six pilot map countries, what we found came as a rude awakening. Not only were they overwhelmingly using informal financial services, they actually persisted in using informal services, even if they had formal alternatives. So it's interesting to see, as we see from our note here, that more than two thirds of savings products used by people are informal, and up to 97% of payments products. Why is this? And it's the same across all the countries. And we found a clue, I think, in Thailand. In Thailand, the royal government established some years ago about 80,000 village funds. And those village funds, between them, provide loans for about 7.4 million Thais and savings for about 5.3. What do those village funds have in common with informal financial services? The point is, they're local. Not only does the customer get the service from a local provider, but the decision making on whether the customer can obtain the service and the terms on which it's provided is also local. Local services are convenient, they are flexible, they are trusted. If your circumstances change, you can simply walk around the corner, speak face to face to the provider and change the terms. But if those services are remotely provided, it's a different story. Very often, you have no option of renegotiating the services and you simply have to accept the services. And at the worst, you become blacklisted and cannot obtain any further services. So what does this mean? If you want to get customers to use formal services, you have an adoption threshold. And whatever you provide must have the convenience and the flexibility and the low cost of a locally provided services. If you cannot achieve that, the customers will opt to go local.